Hey everyone, welcome to the GRE how-to series where we make studying for the GRE a lot more tolerable. Today we're going to be talking about algebra and what you should really watch out for. Oh ho. Hey everyone, welcome back and uh, Fun sidebar, Ojo is when I, what I learned when I studied abroad in Argentina and my host mom was really great. She was literally like my mom for a year and she really kind of told me like things to watch out for, like eating too much cake or else my boyfriend would leave me. Um, gotta love, gotta love moms. Anyway, I'm here to talk to you about the things that you should watch out for in algebra based on some of my experience. Honestly, I have always felt like I've been great at algebra. It's my favorite kind of math. And I've been pretty, I was feeling myself when it was, when it was time for encountering those questions in the jury practice tests and even in the test itself. But when I took the diagnostic test again recently, I got a question wrong that I just, I shouldn't have gotten wrong and it's because I didn't take some key number properties information with me as I tried to tackle this problem. So today I thought it would be great if we just walked through my thought process in this problem and if you think like me, perhaps this might be helpful or familiar to you so that when we try to work on these kinds of problems again, we are building some kind of muscle memory to know that we need to do some extra steps to make sure we get this right. Okay, so let's look up to chapter eight, number six of the five pound book of GRE problems. If x plus three in parentheses squared equals 225, which of the following could be the value of x minus one? Okay, so I don't really know how my brain did this, but I wrote down x plus one when I was getting ready to do this problem and like that is critical misstep number one. It's just really important that you pay attention to every single letter, symbol, number on the screen because I think our test makers are definitely kind of anticipating that some of us may be fatigued, not paying attention and they'll have an answer choice in there uh, ready to capitalize on that mistake. So maybe, maybe it would just be great to just write big X minus one somewhere so that you can just always remember what you're trying to do in this problem. So next I looked at X plus three in parentheses squared and 225. I already knew that the square root of 225 is 15 because of case math and crazy consulting prep life. So I was like, all right, cool. All I have to do is take the square root of each side and then X plus three equals 15, track three from both sides, X equals 12. Boom, I did it. Except I didn't. Uh, I only did half of it, really. Uh, let's rewind, shall we? Take the square root of both sides and we know that X plus three could equal 15 or x plus three could equal negative 15 because 15 squared is 225 and so is negative 15 squared. So if x plus three equals 15, x equals 12, or if x plus three equals negative 15, then x equals negative 18. Okay, so if x equals 12 or negative 18, then x minus one equals 11 or negative 19. This is when I can look at the answer choices and match against them. And I see that negative 19 is the only option available. So there we go. That is the correct answer. Now that's more like it. With this, I learned it's really important to make sure that we're checking our assumptions and taking into account key number properties that we need to remember throughout the entire quantitative section of this test. And if you need a reminder of some key number properties that you will see on the GRE, check up here for one of my number properties videos. It's one of my favorites, so I am excited for you to see it. Now I'm really trying to internalize that when I see an exponent, I need to keep in mind that the square root of that could be positive or negative. It's gonna be really important that I remember that because that is the nature of the game. 
And unless I get information from the test that limits the scope, then I should be operating as if both of those are possibilities. So I hope this is helpful. You got to kind of understand my brain process and how I'm learning to kind of correct some of my, my automatic responses. If this video was helpful for you, give me a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to follow me on this journey. I'm really curious to learn what are the tools that you use to keep track of information on your scratch paper. Do you have like a grid method or, or something that helps you kind of pay attention and, and not lose track of information? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to get your advice because that's always a, <laughs> always a battle. And as always, if you have any ideas or anything that you want me to cover in this series, please let me know in the comments below. I always love hearing the suggestions. I'll talk to you next time. Uh -huh.